Dit programma is tot stand gekomen met een bijdrage uit het Mediafonds Amstelveen. Welcome to the fifth episode of Amstelveen for Everybody, an English-speaking show for our international community here in Amstelveen. So today we're going to be talking about education. Amstelveen is a city with many internationals and a beautiful international allure. Expats and newcomers have found their base here in Amstelveen, but along with them, they bring their children. So this has a big impact on education. What does this mean for kids? What does it mean for the schools? And what does it mean for our local environment? We're going to be talking about all these topics here today. With me on table, I've got the alderman, Floor Gordon, who's been taking over the portfolio of education here in Amstelveen for her uh, colleague, Frank Berkhout. Then we have Mr. Neville Curtin, who is the head of the Senior School for Amity International. It's Amst Amity International Amsterdam, but you're based here in Amstelveen. Correct. It's a really bad marketing. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, brilliant. We're so excited to have you here. It's the first time that we've got someone from Amity International School also on table. So brilliant. Floor, you've been a guest with us before. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Well, so. Flora, I got to ask you, over the years, you know, you've seen Amstelveen uh, maybe even change. We've had COVID, now we're out of COVID. How, has there been an increase in uh, internationals and expats? Do you think that it's had a big impact on us or has it kind of like mellowed out? Yeah, it's an interesting question because uh, historically, Amstelveen is a pretty international city. We've had a very large Japanese community and over the years, uh, different groups have come into the city. And of course, we've been the base of International School of Amsterdam for many years already. Um, then Amity came in as another private school. But I think the biggest change is not the number of internationals. It's the fact that it's not only children of the classic expat who go yep. to international private education, but many more children of knowledge workers who also sometimes end up staying in Amstelveen in the Netherlands, which uh, means that they want to integrate into society and go to regular education. Um, and yeah, if you if you look at the numbers, uh, currently about 22% of all Amstelveen, Amstelveeners, people from Amstelveen, are, don't have a Dutch background, um, I mean, or don't have a Dutch passport, but almost half of them have an international background. Right. So Neville. We've got the Amity International School who is based here in Amstelveen. Of course, it caters to the wider Amsterdam area in that sense. There's been such an influx of new international people coming in, newcomers, expats. I can imagine that this has changed, you know, the Amity International School. How do you see it? Certainly. I mean, we've had a, a significant increase in the number of students joining us in the last uh, couple of years. We opened in 2018 with just two students. Oh, wow. We've now got nearly 400. Um, many of those uh, families that have joined us have come from some of the traditional um, places of origin, from the US, from the UK, um, some from you know, Australia, Canada, many students from India, uh, from Japan. We're also seeing more Dutch students joining our school, which I think is an interesting and exciting yep. development and is helping with the integration between the international community and the, and the local community. Um, more recently, we've had some students coming from, from both Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had students from other um, sort of geopolitical uh, hotspots like Syria and elsewhere. And of course, all across Europe, further afield from the Far East, from China, Japan, right. South Korea, as well as Latin America. So yes, we, w our student population is growing steadily and I think it's a very exciting time to see so many students from all over the world. Absolutely. So, I mean, you talk about that there's so many different cultures, it's like a melting pot, I would say, in the school. Exactly. And of course, you touched upon that local Dutch uh, children are also joining the school. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But in general, you've grown from two to 400 students in, let's say, less than five years. That's an enormous growth. How were you able to take this on? Well, I think there's been a lot of hard work on, on the part of all uh, all the staff involved and indeed the family community as well. Um, we've all worked incredibly hard to get to the school to the position that it's in at the moment. Um, at the end of 2020 we were 
uh, authorised by the IB to offer the primary years programme. A year later, we had our middle years programme authorised, um, and only five or six months later, the diploma programme authorised. So we are now fully accredited by the IB as a whole school continuum, um, and we're you know we're we're working in in many different ways to offer a very enriching curriculum, uh, which I think is is relevant to students. Um, drawing upon the philosophy and the values of the IB. New international children in Amstelveen do not naturally always speak English, let alone Dutch. Some come from Japan or Ukraine, and therefore they're speaking their mother language. But the question is, how as a school do you handle that? Well, there's good news because there's a special program to help children speak one language in the school and get on track with their education. Take a look. MIT was founded five years ago and started with just two students. There are now more than 400 students from more than 35 different nationalities. The EAL program is a very successful program that teaches children English so that they can manage themselves. EAL is called uh, English as an Additional Language Program. So as an international school, our curriculum is taught in English. We have families from all over the world, and for some children, English is not their first language. When those children come to our school, we enroll them in the EAL program, which supports their language acquisition within the classroom, as well as through small group EAL classes. Alice and Shirley are two students who participate in the EAL program and so quickly and playfully master the English language. I'm from South Korea. South Korea. It's been one year. Almost two years. It's difficult to communicate each other. It's like I'm sure it's more easier than Chinese and other language. I use translator or I use body language or I talk by words. Um, it's just more fun that I'm learning Korean in Korea, <laughs> yeah. because in here we play more game and activity to learn English, like not just reading it. The EAL program is ideal for Alice and Shirley. They only speak Korean at home and did not speak a word of English when they went to Amity. They are two good examples of what their curriculum aims to achieve. Um, integrating these children into the classroom is the most effective way for them to learn English so they can uh, foster interactions between teachers and their peers. When I just come, I was like zero English, <laughs> no English. Like. And do you remember how you started with what kind of words? Oh, I just started like my favorite animal or mm -hmm. food because like I love cat. <laughs> oh, you love yeah. cat. Okay. Then I talk with those things and I learn a little words. And Good. yeah, and my friend gave me like some toys or something and they show me it's umbrella, it's cat, it's dog, like that. We do try and make it fun. Um, I think the most important part is for students to enjoy the process of learning. It is intimidating being in an environment where you may not know the language. So we provide a safe environment for them to take risks in learning the English. Where in the beginning they had to talk with hands and feet and use a translator, they now can also manage in the English language. Now it's time for Dutch. Our children learn Dutch in their Dutch classes um, where the teachers foster Dutch language learning. Um, they learn about the culture uh, as well as through their units of inquiry. And why they need to master the English language is clear from Shirley's last words. I think it's going to be very important because if I live in somewhere is not speaking Korean, Mm -hmm. then I need to speak English to talk with someone. So like we heard in the report, a new city, a new country, but it also means a new culture. Also when it comes to school life, I mean, that could also mean there's no, no uniforms or uh, maybe you have to take a packed lunch, only sandwiches for lunch. Who knows? Things keep changing. So, um, of course, Amity International School is housing a different cultures. It's varied across the board, right? From, like you said, from Asia to Europe, you know, people from Ukraine who might have been also dealing with some trauma with them. But you're still based here in the Netherlands. You're based in Amstelveen. How do you encourage that the kids get integrated and they learn about the Dutch culture? 
Well, students um, will, will take Dutch language acquisition. That's a, a core subject that we expect all of our students in, in the middle years to take. Um, and they're not only learning the language, but they're understanding a lot about the local Dutch culture. Um, we, we will be celebrating key festivals during the school year, for example, the King's Day celebrations. We have um, various activities during the Kinderbooken week. We talk a lot about Sinterklaas and, and other um, key moments during the, during the academic year. During the Dutch language acquisition classes, students learn in their units of inquiry um, perhaps a lot about the, the local food, the, the history, the culture. Students might be exploring and understanding um, a lot about you know the experience of, of the Dutch people during the Second World War, for example, and understanding the wider context mm -hmm. um, or the links between um, New Amsterdam and Old Amsterdam and so on. So there are many opportunities and of course we have many Dutch students in the school as well who share yes. their culture and with whom students can you know learn and develop their Dutch their Dutch skills. Right. So I can understand you don't want children to live in the bubble. Flora, from your perspective, what do you think, for, as you know, alderman from the municipality, do you think that this is enough? Well, like I said uh, in the introduction, we've seen the population change. And where we used to have classic expats uh, that, that um, onboarded at the International School of Amsterdam, Amity International School, uh, where I have to say it's amazing the programs you offer, including the language and cultural exchanges you mm -hmm. do. Um, but we see a number of people coming in now who do not have the means to go to private education. And so it's been, for us, maybe a struggle, too, to figure out how do you onboard them in the regular education system. Um, so we now have a number of things we offer. We offer uh, actual internationally oriented primary education, which is for people who are not here to stay very long. Um, so they do want to have English, English language education. And as well, we have basically the onboarding in the regular school system. Yep. And for kindergarten, that's easy. You just go to a school and you learn the language. But if you're a little older, you, you have to take a little in-between um, class, basically a link class. Correct. And we offer that to both at the primary school education level as well as secondary education. So people can then follow through in the Dutch language system. But like I said, it's a struggle to figure out what's the best offer you can give children because not everyone knows when they come here if they're going to stay. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, keeping that in mind, that means that there are opportunities for a child to start off in the international stream and then transition into a local Dutch school in that sense. Theoretically, it's possible. And I don't know if it happens very often right now. Um, and I also, in, in general, I would say, let's hope that children don't have to transfer too much during their, you know, their childhood. Um, so it's very important that in the beginning, when people come here, we have a very good intake and a good information office, which we have now in English and centralized information office, where we can talk to the parents uh, about their intentions of staying and basically advise them to the best extent on where to go. And when I say we, it's not the city that does that. No. We subsidize it. Uh, we have no part in the actual education of children, but we want to make sure the infrastructure is in place, the information is in place, so people can pick the right place for their child and yep. that way, yeah, integrate. But where can they go? If, ch if parents have a question about, you know, how they can get their kids transition into a Dutch school, where, where do they log in? Where do they check this information? Who do they talk to? Well, I think the first, Thing. I always say the click, call, and face principle, but on, on our website, the Centralized Information Office, Amstelveen, you can find a, a range of information, what is available for which age group, because it's very specialized too. Is your child at the daycare level, and do you want to have international or yep. bilingual daycare, or is your child a little older and mm -hmm. ready to go to primary school or even beyond that, secondary school? Uh, and there it's all explained, what are the offerings, where are the schools, and then it's probably best after you've like informed yourself to talk to somebody. Yep. The Ukrainian Amstelfeners have their own way of safeguarding their language and their culture. For that, they've got a special school that starts on Sundays for all their children. Our regular vlogger, Curtis, he's going to take a look at what this school entails. Hey everybody, Curtis here again. You know, this month we're talking about education here in the Netherlands. And a popular phenomenon amongst SPAT is Sunday school. So I'm here at the Ukrainian school 
uh, in Amstelveen. Uh, and this is a, a place where they come to you know, study the language, have cultural connections, and just keep that connection back to their home country. So let's go check it out and see what's going on here. Hey everybody, I'm here with Vitaly Tonunchuk. He's the director of the Ukrainian Hi. school here in Amstelveen. So how, how many children attend this? We currently have uh, almost 160 children every Sunday coming to, 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 to attend wow. the Ukrainian uh, lessons. And has it become more popular since the war broke out? Incredible, yeah. We have quadrupled, quadrupled? since uh, since a year ago. Yeah. Are, and do they all live here in Amsterdam? No, the children are coming from uh, the area of Amsterdam. Okay. It's about, yeah, there are many people, many children are from Amsterdam, Amsterdam, but there are also children from Utrecht, Amsfoort, wow. other cities. Hey everybody, so we're here with Yuri. He's one of the parents of some children that go to the school here. So, so what sort of activities do your kids engage in? Uh, uh, in the school here, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the school they, uh, they learn different, uh, yeah, different things. They learn a bit of history of Ukraine, they do some arts and uh, some creative things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, for, for the main, main thing, uh, at least for me, that they hang out in the, in the community. You know, that they uh, have, a, have a place where they can speak Ukrainian and see uh, people who are like-minded or at least, you know, speak the same language. And what sort of activities do you all do here? The main, the main purpose of the, of the school is to teach uh, children the Ukrainian language, uh, but also, you know, bring the, the Ukrainian children together, mm -hmm. uh, let them communicate in, their, in the language of their parents, um, and yeah, enjoy, enjoy the time on Sundays. So it's clearly also a strength to live in a city surrounded with so many different cultures and nationalities. I think I have a question for you, Flora. If I'm listening to this, there are schools that safeguard you know, let's say not the your mother tongue as well and uh, the culture that you grew up in. How does the municipality, though, ensure that the schools and let's take let's take an international school is doing enough to integrate children? Oh, that's a tough question because that really goes onto the terrain of where the schools are um, taking charge. But as a, as an alderman, I think it's important to mention that. Um, you want children to have the best language education. And even if you want to learn English or Dutch, it helps to also know your mother tongue quite well. So first of all, for the language education, it's important to know your mother tongue. And then secondly, for the connection to your country. And I think integration works so much better if it's also, if you're also able to see the distinctions, uh, to celebrate uh, your own uh, holidays and festivities and it brings something to the Dutch children too who grew up in a much more international environment uh, where they can learn from other children. And, right. uh, but is the municipality taking an active role to ensure and encourage international schools or maybe let's say a, st a standard that they have to do integration or no, we, we don't set rules, but we do try to enable this. Uh, the Ukrainian school is something that we have no like legal obligation to host, but already years ago, we thought it was important enough to have it and to offer it. And we have actively looked with the schools to house them now that they've grown so much, as, as it yeah. was mentioned in the video, quadrupled, yeah. which immediately left us with a problem because the, the location they were in before wasn't big enough. So what we do is try to ensure that everything surrounding the education system is in place so this can be offered to these students. Thank you very much, Flor. So Neville, for you, for the Amity International School, do you feel that as a school you're, you're doing enough to ensure that kids are integrated? I think we're making some good steps forward, but there's still much more work that we can do. Um, I think ultimately through, through the IB program and the framework, there's many opportunities for our students to actively uh, provide service, um, to get involved in the local community. We've had some examples um, such as collections. We had a, um, a period poverty campaign that our students decided to focus on okay. with large donations to, to the Amstelveen Food Bank, for example. Um, we've, we've had donations and collections for the Ukrainian community. But I think that there's much more that we need to do and we want to empower our students to, to take some of those yep. initiatives and um, to develop their own sense of agency and in, in, in the process, develop their language skills and, and connections to local people as well. Great, let's keep hoping that you know maybe more schools uh, take bid from this and yep. also maybe there's a collaboration point for you. 
in that sense. E exactly. We don't want to be isolated within the community. We very much want to be integrated and our wider family community want to do so yep. as well. So we, w we welcome those opportunities and we will actively work to, to try to reach out. Great. Thank you. Friend for Friend is part of Participe, which helps young newcomers, you know, get to know Amsofain and the surroundings. They're accompanied with a buddy and they get to know about, let's say, daily life of a ordinary Dutch family. They get to know the routines, they get to know the cultures and the habits. It gives them a soft landing to come into the Netherlands. We uh, match a young status holder, so uh, someone that's a refugee and uh, someone that's like between the age group of 16 and 27 uh, that was born and raised in Holland. They will walk with each other for like six months. Newcomer John and buddy Fabian have been linked by friend for friend. They have been working together for a few months now to make John feel at home and to make a connection with Amstelveen. And that goes beyond just learning the language. It's the experience of the 18-year-old John who came to Amstelveen from Uganda two years ago. He asked me a lot with the language. If I need some help with my homework, he helps me. Yeah. A language is like, it's, it's one of the barriers, right, if you want to assimilate into a uh, civilization, society. But, uh, like, knowing where to go to get what also, like, really matters. Like, your lay of the land, so to speak. You're helping people in way more aspects of life than just language. Sometimes you may be at home lonely, you have nothing to do. Yeah, and you're here, you don't know anyone, you can't speak the language. And sometimes... The people from, for Friends for Friends, they came to my school, they said if you want to participate, come. We can get for you people who can help you with anything you want. Friend for Friends is therefore not only for learning the Dutch language. Perhaps even more important is to ensure that they integrate into society and make new contacts. And you offer, offer some like uh, easy ways into some things that are mainly things like Dutch people do and, and knows like uh, how education works for example or how uh, healthcare works it's it's a perspective from someone who's like born and raised here and it might it may help a lot if you're not from here the friends of friend concept I think it's actually actually good because like some people come from other countries come here like to live here and they may have some problems they can't communicate with other people and organ organizations like Friends for Friends come and help people like that, yeah. It basically helps some people and some people have some emotional struggles and some struggles at home, they want to just have someone to talk to, yeah. The starting points are therefore very diverse. Think of it as a broad package of a social safety net. Buddy Fabian sees that John has already grown enormously after a few months. He was like really outgoing in the first place, so it was not like shy or anything, but um, like around each other, we're way more comfortable than we were in the first place. Coordinator Abdi, who was a buddy last year, has developed a close friendship. The importance of friend for friend is therefore very clear to him. Uh, it's very easy to get uh, like socially isolated, and if you can't speak the language and you don't have a lot of family or friends here, it's like very easily for you to fall out of picture. So here we try to participate everyone and like they gain a big network from it. So for them, it's like a good thing. And for us, we're helping other people. So you could never go wrong with that. You want to say goodbye in Dutch? Uh, do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, friend for friend, I think it's a great concept. Is it something for the international school maybe to send over volunteers or? I think it would be a fantastic uh, initiative for us to, to um, connect with. We've got lots of students currently doing the diploma program, 17, 18 year old students that, that as part of that program will undertake CAS experiences, creativity, yeah. activity and service. And I think these would be ideal service uh, focused activities. I think they would benefit enormously from. Absolutely, and I think it helps, you know, you don't need children to, uh, as a parent, you don't need just kids just to integrate or find mm. new friends. There's a brilliant program, Friend for Friend, that mm. can do so. I'm quite excited about it. It's heartwarming <laughs> to yeah. see, and, uh, but at the same time, it was a little bit uh, confronting, too, to hear that um, 
some of these newcomers, the status holders, can feel quite lonely of if course. they don't get that yeah. network and that opportunity. So yeah. I both think this is amazing, uh, but we all have to like basically look out for one another. And sometimes it's very hard for a newcomer to integrate and know what to do. And, you know, as a Dutch culture, we're a little bit standoffish. We'll, we'll look and see who's the new neighbor, but we will not go actively towards them to say, sure. hey, how are you doing? So it requires something from both sides to connect. It's just a, a yeah, applause for the volunteers who, who do this because the personal contact is is so much more than just learning mm. a language or absolutely. Yeah. And I think yeah. our young people and, and 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 these young people will have far more in common than than separates them. And I think absolutely. it's finding those those common areas uh, and, and and building those relationships. Great. So we're wrapping up. We're coming towards the end of the show. Let's end on a high. I want to ask both of you, what are you proud of in your own domains? Oh, Neville, let's start with you. Um, I'm very proud of the, the speed at which we've grown and what we've managed to achieve in a relatively short period of time, um, not least of all against the backdrop of, of the pandemic. I know that's a, a constant uh, theme of, of some of your previous guests as well. But we've come out of um, a period in education which has been very difficult, um, lots of challenges, in, in, certainly in terms of student well-being. We've tried to address those those concerns, and I think now we're at a point in education more more universally where we're thinking um, about transformation. How can we best prepare our students for the challenges ahead? How do we ensure that our education system is really fit for purpose for the challenges that, that our young people will will inevitably face? Uh, and it's actually a very exciting time, an optimistic time. Super. Flora, what about yourself? Yeah, I'm mostly proud of our of our schools, um, mm. both private, uh, as, as Neville is describing, Amity, but also all the public schools. Yep. And uh, what I've seen over the last few years, and it's been a privilege to be able to do this port education portfolio for a while, but it's been a privilege to see how the schools have managed to deal with all these challenges over the last few years and at the same time adapt for the future, where no one falls out, where inclusive education, it's constantly adapting to the new needs, to new demands. What has happened over the past year with the inflow of Ukrainian mm -hmm. refugees, it's just amazing. So it's just a big applause to the schools. We're not yet there because they're probably going to say, oh, you're so overly optimistic now and we're really we're sweating it here. Uh, which is also true. So we have to keep an eye out for that. They're Absolutely. really struggling to make it all happen. Um, and let's treat them with respect and uh, an open mind because they're really doing their utmost to provide us with the best education for our children. Absolutely. Education, it's how you bring people together. It's how you safeguard people as well, cultures, and it's how you bring people together. So I think both of you are doing a great job in making this happen for Amstelfein, for the students and for the families. Thank you so much for having for coming on this show as well and uh, having me host you. Thank, Thank you, you very for much for having us. us. Thank you. All right, so our next episode is about living and housing. So be sure to tune in to watch us next month. And if you've got an idea or if you want to get on the show, feel free to reach out to us. We are always looking for guests and we're always looking for ideas. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. <laughs>